to come up with a really formal description of the sculpture, I've been working on it for a long time, but really I define them as assemblage or found welded steel scrap metal sculptures, but they're also very much um, about the shapes and about narrative, about the, each piece of metal that I find brings a history with it to the sculpture. So a piece of plumbing, a plumber is going to see something completely different than an artist or you know, a musician when you put a piece of pipe into your sculpture. But that pipe originally was a pipe. It served a purpose. And it, all of the elements I use had one of those previous lives, and I, I'm fascinated by that. Maybe I don't purposely put them together to try to tell some very specific beginning to end story, but oftentimes those narratives come out as I'm working or later, I'll come looking at a sculpture I've all finished with and go, oh, I didn't even see this. And it works really well. I've made friends with a lot of people. Um, I've stayed in one place a long time, so people know that I'm here. But when I go hunting, I refer to it as treasure hunting. And I will go out and seek pretty much anything made of metal, but normally, I'm drawn to things like repeated forms, and uh, I like circular forms. So I'm always picking up pieces of pipe or circles of any shape, size. Um, that kind of repetition in the sculpture themselves is important to me. Uh, but also, I'll go to a scrapyard. There's a couple of scrapyards that'll still allow artists to come and uh, put a hard hat on and wander around the premises, and they'll sell metal to me. And I'll just see a shape that I immediately see, a, see the beginnings of a sculpture. I'll pick it up and go, ah, this is, this is something to start with. And I've got probably dozens of pieces started in my head and those parts sitting around the shop waiting for me to uh, pay attention to them. Most of my life I've liked to take things apart, figure out all the mechanical ins and outs, um, the cogs and wheels and things like that. But I'm also, each time I get interested in something new, like when I got interested in metal, I started researching you know, metal works and refineries, that, or not refineries, um, uh, like uh, blast furnaces and smelting and things like that. And I will go as far as my interests will take me, but I'm, I love to know how things are made. And within that search and that research, I come up with dozens of ideas for sculptures too. It's like, how can I use what I'm learning uh, visually in a work of art? I've always made pots. I, uh, you know, took the requisite pottery class, and that's what actually got me turned on to clay in Sacramento. Um, and, but I, I'm a hand builder, so I really spent most of my graduate school, both my MA and my MFA, doing large-scale ceramic uh, work. I do uh, eight, nine-foot-tall coil-built sculptures. But uh, I've always made pots because I like to eat off of them. I like to see my friends drinking coffee out of my mugs, things like that. So there's a personal connection to people who you know, work with clay and who like to you know, eat and drink out of clay. And so that has always also been a funding. Uh, I do it for funding. I'll, I'll make pottery, I'll sell it, so I have money to buy scrap metal and, and things. So it's kind of a self-serving on a several levels. Being an artist, I'm, I'm an artist, I'm a sculptor, and I really define myself as a teacher, a sculptor, an artist. And the fact that I really live to make things, I, I, I think that's really the core of what I'm hoping for you know, another 20 years.